Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the celebrated <laughs> nightly news of Calaveras County. It doesn't look like evening, though. I know. Mm -mm. How are you, sir? Good. <laughs> hey, we're pushing, we're pushing live again tonight. So if you're watching on the site now, thanks for joining us. And we are, this is kind of our Angels Camp Bypass ver You know, it, it is the Angel Camp I'm going to put my sunglasses version. on. I know yes, Sarah says it doesn't like, look uh, good, but boy, it's pretty bright out here. Um, and this is... Uh, <clears throat> and if you hear like vehicles in the background which we're actually in the back of Starbucks yes we are and so we're next to the drive-thru actually so if you hear vehicles or people talking that's what you that's hear. why mm -hmm. yep and we're talking bypass because we had the chance to talk with uh, the cog director Tim McSorley the new, uh, cog, the director. new cog director a couple mm -hmm. days ago and he was talking about the funding issues and things like that and mm -hmm. now it's out for bid and it is, it out, is for out for bid, bid and he mm -hmm. was saying that on the funding timelines that they have to be on mm -hmm. is this thing they may start shoveling dirt in September just because I'm not surprised. they they I am you know not it's, it's been a all. long it's been a like you were saying a 25 year process it's more than a 25 year process we actually Calaveras County shares um, highway not highway funds but transit funds with both Tuolumne and Amador counties in a in a MOU for transportation issues and in Amador County there was a bypass that As took a lot of the money. IOU? Yes, exactly. <laughs> they do owe. Um, but now it's Calaveras County's term. Yeah. So now they are actually building the Angels Camp bypass, which is an amazing thing. And kind of the last little interesting thing from talking to Tim a couple of days ago was there's mm -hmm. this last four million or so that mm -hmm. was kind of a, a gift from the state, you know, in the last yes, round like a few uh, a couple months ago. <laughs> Caltrans, I guess, almost screw. You know, Caltrans. Well, Caltrans at almost, one point was saying you're not going to be able to do this. Well, yeah, but it was almost it was one of those things of left hand not knowing what the, the right, right hand, hand was, was doing, doing because Caltrans, you know, he was laying out timelines with them, and they were mm -hmm. saying, well, first we have to go through the notification period that we're going to notify. So basically, they had a period <laughs> of saying that instead of publishing it out for bid, they mm -hmm. were going to have to publish that they were going, going to, to publish, publish. so mm -hmm. and that would have if they would have held the full timeline on that mm -hmm. that would have actually they probably would have lost that four and some million four and a half million of funding because they just recently, it, cause it, it wouldn't have it cost money well it wouldn't have stayed in the timeline exactly exactly um, if they do overruns it costs extra money right it's, it's amazing the funding mechanisms for anything government related are usually convoluted and complex right and confusing quite and frankly. I wish it was like budgets when I was growing up because mm -hmm. basically you have to spend it to get more yes right? uh-huh <laughs> 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 you just spend it to get more. Those are my okay, kind of those budgets. Are you like yeah, those I budgets. like those. Yeah. Yes, yes. There are some state departments that do actually work that way. You do have to spend up to your allotted amount of funds, or else you will not get you won't, any more. Yeah, you have to show mm -hmm. that you need it, right? Exactly. Just I think and on this one, obviously, well, Cal they Fire need it. is one of those departments okay. as well. But uh, so these the bypass has officially started. Technically. Technically, yeah. because uh, as you can see behind us and behind, behind us, us over right here, there. Um, they've actually put up the barriers, put up the barriers and moved the lanes to the side. So there's going to be quite a bit of sort of traffic congestion down here at the Correct. T junction of Highway 4 and 49 in Angels Camp for quite a few months, is my yeah. understanding. Yeah, and I think the barriers mm -hmm. on this phase will be in place for about 30 days. And yes. what they are, um, and what these are in place for is that um, they need to move the utilities yes so they're making adjustments to the underground utilities mm -hmm. and you also this is one of the interesting things is um, you'll notice smoke signals signals, signals if you've been up here smoke signals has moved mm -hmm. and if you've been following some of the uh, local pr press the last six months mm -hmm. is he's been in a protracted battle with Caltrans uh -huh. and that finally all got resolved. We had yes. a little piece that you'll see on the site. Uh, mm -hmm. Took some shots down there. They're in their new location. But they were the very last holdout. Exactly. And it was kind of interesting because mm -hmm. that whole shopping center you'll see behind us was completely vacant. It's vacant. They had torn down a building. It was uh -huh. vacant. Mm -hmm. And here's Dwight and smoke signals. They're sticking <laughs> right there. And I guess what had happened is there were some disagreements on his humidor and things like that because it's a smoke shop. They do cigars yes. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I guess for part of his moving um, costs is Caltrans 
was supposed to build the humidor in the new location. Oh, really? And I guess they didn't they build did. it to, to spec his specifications, or something huh? like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that um, was taken care of because he's actually in his new location. He's in the new right? location. Okay. Everybody, uh, you know, it's, so he's happy and um, everything moves on. It does. And, and uh, Goldie's is gone. Yeah, I mean, everything's gone. I mean, you'll see that. Uh, so they're ready to go. And mm-hmm. yeah, the interesting on this is they estimate these. So I guess um, they'll get the bids back mid-July. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have 10 days, I believe, to award the contract. Yeah. And then it's it's off to the races. Um, mm-hmm. And I asked him, I says, how many contractors would they expect? He says, normally five or so, but he hopes for about 10. Because oh, if they okay. can get 10... And, and he says it's usually a mixture of the big boys, the granites yes, and yes. stuff that you would expect. But he says mm-hmm. occasionally you'll get some out-of-state contractors mm-hmm. and stuff as well. But um, And if we rush real quick to like uh, Billy Bob's night contracting school, we could mm-hmm. probably get a bid in. We could. And then we could get our <laughs> bid denied. Yes. <laughs> that would be our moonlighting job, us out yeah. there with shovels. A $60 yes. million project. No, but, um, and it was an interesting thing in this, I guess... Um, and just as an aside, I asked about a contracting firm that's been in the news lately, uh, mm-hmm. somebody like Valley Cooper. Yes. That, And he says they could bid on the whole thing, but mm-hmm. he doesn't know. But they may actually do, I guess a lot of their stuff is really structural. So they may actually okay. be a subcontractor on things like some of the bridges. Because I guess there's okay. several actual engineered structures in this as well. So. Because it actually, for those of you who don't know where the bypass goes, it actually bypasses downtown and hooks up with Highway 4 going up to Murphy's on the other side of Angel's Camp and it, it sort of follows the path of Rolleri Bypass. Right. So um, if you're actually going up Murphy's Grade Road and you know where the PG&E facility is, that's sort of where it will sort of fly by and it actually will be a bypass right. over that area. Right. So it will be kind of an interesting structure <laughs> well, yeah but I think <laughs> once you know, they they begin and then it will join up with highway 4 and it will free up downtown Angels camp quite frankly and don't you think that's really a good thing because yes they're gonna have reduced con- throughput but that way it'll allow uh, downtown Angels to be a more of a destination stop you know, yes so that it way- does and it also takes a lot of the traffic impact off of Murphy's grade Road because right. a lot of people go up right. Murphy's grade Road and it was not built to hold that type of traffic. Right. Because, at that, you know, at the time it was built, most people were taking the highways up, Highway 49, and then up, up, joining yeah. up with 4 again. Because Highway 4 and 49 are the same right through Angel's Camp, and then they right. diverge again. So Murphy's Grade Road has taken quite a bit of traffic that was not actually intended for it to take. So it will it will mitigate that traffic impact now, as well. Don't some of the traffic studies show that mm-hmm. traffic on um, traffic upcountry traffic is relatively the same on Murphy's Grade Roads as, as it is on Highway Four? I mean, it, it's almost a pretty even it's split. It's an even split. When I mean, people find um, out about Murphy's Grade, that's what they take. Right. It cuts a few miles off in a few minutes. So. You know, you don't have to go through downtown Angels. But it's not as safe. No, no. It's not It's not a straight shot. Not Definitely even close. Not. <laughs> so, um, so we'll all be waiting with bated breath to see what this actually ends up looking like. I think it'll be, you know, it'll mm. be um, a nice thing. I really do. Yeah. Um, well, also, in other local stuff, um, mm-hmm. we get some numbers today on the, the fundraiser at the Foothills Restaurant for the Portinga family. Okay. Raised about $4,700 on mm-hmm. this fundraiser alone. Exactly. And they were there. They worked long and hard that day. It was all day. day. All it was day. all day. And we stopped by about 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. It was ostensibly the cutoff date was going to be about 4.30 or yeah. so, but they were still serving. Still serving. Yes. And there were some tired people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the outpouring of support for the for that family has been has been, has been amazing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, you know, it's uh, it's nice to see. Mm-hmm. And in other fundraising news, last weekend the uh, Kevin Burnett Memorial Golf Tournament that CCWD put da- on down in Valley Springs raised six thousand dollars for the wastewater wow. rate assistance program, which is bless you, um, which helps those people who have low incomes to afford their wastewater rates. Bless you again. And I'm sorry about that. Early. We're outside and so. I should have taken a Claritin. So. <laughs> so that's actually, those were some very high numbers yes. for two local fundraisers um, for 
individuals in the county, so that was good. Also, yeah. in other news, Planning Commission meets tomorrow. Yes. And Planning Commission can uh, either be contentious or not. And those of you who have followed the whole planning issues in the county as far as the general plan revamp and um, different developments being built. Right. This is sort of interesting. They tabled a, an item from May 17th for actually Wallace Lake Estates, and it's like the second unit to be built uh -huh. in Wallace Lake Estates. And what they're going to discuss actually is a zoning amendment change for their tentative subdivision, subdivision tract map. And what it will do is it will take, um, let's see, 155.42 acres from single family residential public service and general agricultural as well as recreation and environmental protection and switch it to single family residential and recreation environmental protection as well so as it, land for the lake parcel but it is will, it just a minor no what it will also do is it will approve a division of 61 plus acres into 124 single family lots. Oh. So you will if this does get approved, it will allow 124 wow. single family lots to be subdivided from 61 acres. Very nice. This is going to be around the new golf course. It's yes. Yeah. <laughs> actually, well, no, I'm just no, joking. No. This is actually yes, yeah. The, the next one is around a golf course. It's the Tuscany Hills project actually, and they're actually trying to get a vesting tentative subdivision tract map okay. passed before the planning com commission and eventually this particular well this tentative subdivision tract map uh, includes 335 single family homes. Oh, so that's a pretty good size. And that is around an 18 hole <laughs> Got it. golf but course. Probably so that was not why the one I was that's been put in by stealth, right? By stealth? You've been following the stuff about there's a golf course on that side of the county that basically, this is Tuscany Hills. I know. That yeah, basically, this isn't stealthy at all. That, that, a, that a guy <laughs> has uh, basically just put in over the last 10 years. A golf course. Yeah, I'm, a golf I'm course. not surprised at that at all. <laughs> it's amazing what just miraculously appears, you know. And yeah. then, uh, then they go back and try and get the planning approval. But the county is in sort of a period of flux right now as far as their planning and their general plan. Right, right. And um, they're tightening down, as most of you know, they are tightening down on ordinances, zoning, and regulations. Although sometimes some stuff still passes through. Yeah. And... Uh, It'll be interesting to continue to watch what happens with the planning commission well, they, and um, the board of supervisors. Haven't they opened it? I mean, because when they did the, um, they've opened it back up to where there are some exemptions now, where you can get mm -hmm. stuff through, right? I mean, if things like this that have been in the plan for a while, they can't just shut them off. Well, technically, that's what is supposed to happen. Well, it's that's true. my understanding. Yeah. But um, whether that's actually happening or not, I have not been able to deduce, quite frankly. That's true. So I can't make a comment on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's planning commission tomorrow. Actually, those are the two big items. Yeah, those are the big items. That the planning commission is going um, to actually talk about. And also, if you've been driving up and down uh, Murphy's Grade Road, you've seen probably the Vanguard, right? Santa Clara Vanguard. Fabulous. <laughs> they no, are guess, just great. They, do they come here every year? Every is that year their thing? Every year they come here and they practice and they practice their routine. And they practice, obviously, their music, right. their performance, and it, they are just fabulous. And then they compete all over the country. Interesting. And it's it's te uh, technically a drum corps, is my understanding, yeah. but they have every instrument huh. in there. <laughs> but they actually, what they do is they put on a free show for the residents of Angels Camp slash Very nice. County as a way of saying thank you. For letting them come in and use the Bret Hart facility right. to Bret Hart Union High School District's facility yeah. to practice. And if you have never seen that, come out on Saturday. This Saturday they're having it, and it's just great. I stopped by a couple days ago, and it was kind of interesting where they have the little metronome thing. where mm -hmm. they, It's, like a little, it's mm -hmm. almost like a little clicker that goes... Exactly. And they actually... they. It's amazing how they run their, how organized these routes are. It's just exactly a, it's because they they are in separate instrument units, I right. call them, and they 
very often cross paths. Yeah, and it's like uh, they're all just it's like the Blue Angels step. airplane. Exactly. You know, it's just uh, it's pretty exactly. amazing. Exactly. So that's at seven thirty. Of course, there is on, less uh, risk of damage if you just bang Saturday. tubas rather than bang an airplane, right? That's well, it depends <laughs> on on what you consider damage. Exactly. But they um, and if you've been hearing them, that's what you've been hearing yeah. as well. So. It's actually sort of an honor that they would it is. come and practice here. It is. And they'll be competing at Stanford and places now like that. Now, the big so. thing tonight mm -hmm. is Calibris High is graduating 200. 200. 200. That's a big class. Yes, it is. And there will be a sober grad immediately following. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we finish up the uh, broadcast tonight, we're going to be heading Straight over there. over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll hopefully get some footage and a few photos for you. Mm -hmm. Um and also, um, there's been some miscellaneous fires around, small there have stuff. Been. And if you heard mm -hmm. helicopters, or actually earlier today, there was a lot of aerial traffic, especially uh, mm -hmm. up the corridor over yes. Arnold. And it was just, yeah. you know, we had some we had some inquiries, and we talked to CDF or Cal Fire. Mm -hmm. They had had some, and basically there was a debris burn that they were flying over and watching. But I guess we'll have to see the report later. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really get. It out didn't of control. turn into right. anything. Exactly. Yeah. And I guess the other... But they have to watch those. They do. Because they sometimes, do. depending on wind factor and sort of what I call tinder factor, which right. is how dry everything is, that they have to watch them because they can just take off. Well, and also, I guess, on the other fire news is uh, we didn't want to make a big deal of this, but I think it is kind of interesting that the 220-acre fire mm -hmm. um, down on the Stanislaus Calaveras County border <laughs> was caused by a... Uh, Caltrans uh, mower. <laughs> <laughs> it shot some sparks off, huh? Yep, yeah. and 220 acres went up, so I guess the uh, net effect now is uh, one state department is going to have to pay the other state, state department. department so, for this fire suppression. Yeah, so I guess the net effect mm -hmm. probably won't be much, except that one budget goes up and the other one's going to go, go down, down a little, a little bit. bit. Exactly. Uh, you know, that's the... Exactly. Uh, but, it's, but it's worth mentioning, you know, a couple years ago in, in Lake Comanche area, there was a mower um, yeah. fire, and it burned quite a few yeah. acres. And it's worth mentioning that in these types of dry conditions, if you it's have any, how many sort of, of just lawn mower, exactly lawn mower, uh, weed whacker, yeah, uh, incidents where it's a spark will shoot off and it's just tinder dry. I think and the moral of that story is you don't want a metal blade striking a rock. If you have a piece exactly. of nylon string or something, <laughs> yes. go for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Uh, you know, okay, but it's that uh, it's that metal on rock stuff that that flint. It's a, you know, yeah, it's that it uh, really tends is. to mm -hmm. have that cause effect. a spark. It causes spark, and all it takes is one spark. That is true. You know, so just be careful. Now, what do you think on national news that caught your uh, caught your fancy? Well, the thing on national news that caught my not my fancy but my interest, and I did not because my computer is not here, as you will notice right, out on the location. field, <laughs> was that the the producer of the Girls Gone Wild videos is in jail, right, in Nevada. But and it's on he, tax evasion, it's isn't it? It's on millions of dollars yeah. of tax evasion. And I, I, so it's the old Al Capone thing. Huh? It's, I imagine so. They couldn't get him on anything else. And this is after, apparently, he, he spent an undisclosed amount, apparently, to a group of women who said that they were unjustly used, as I guess would be the... Right. Or unjustly exposed right. or unknowingly exposed. And um, they're keeping him in jail. They didn't know they were gonna go that wild I guess right? they didn't realize they were going they were actually on camera in front of a camera so how, where do you figure that out yeah. but I think that's interesting they actually got him on tax evasion and it's millions of dollars yeah and this one, of, and these are the of, kind of things of illegal that it'll, prob it'll probably stick yes yeah it's um, also on uh, upcoming this Saturday we'll give you a little bit of advance notice I know it's not Thursday yet but they're gonna have a free fishing day ah. so the Department of Fish and Game is called a free fishing day uh, recreational anglers may fish without a fishing license. Oh, so that just very means nice. that we can do what we'd normally do, except that we'd be legal. Yes. <laughs> except <laughs> just, I don't fish. Just so. me neither. <laughs> just kidding, me neither. Uh, <laughs> so there's a couple things you can do this weekend. Yeah. And, and also, if barbecuing is your thing, mm -hmm. I think if you hurry, I don't know if the cutoff on this, but your entrance. Uh, yeah, entrance into oh, that's right the Ironstone the Ironstone barbecue contest. Mm -hmm. So get out there and this is the first annual too. The first of many, right? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, 
And also, if you're looking for uh, Board of Supervisors stuff, we eventually had it. We had it up earlier, and there was a um, a corruption about ten minutes in, and mm -hmm. it's about a three hour file. So we're actually re-encoding it now. Mm -hmm. So in fact, we just had a call just before we went online, going, "Where is it? Where is it?" So yeah, that's and I know there's gonna be a lot of interest in this. This, in this, is, one. this was this was the meeting with the septic issues. And, septic issues. And a lot and of public comments. Public comments. Uh, it was a long meeting. And, and an angst-filled an meeting. An angst-filled <laughs> meeting. <laughs> meeting. So, um, you know, people are interested in it. So that should be up later tonight. Yes, that will be up later tonight. Mm -hmm. um, other wrap-up on stuff. We've got, you know, various graduations have been around. Uh, still right. going on there. Mm -hmm. um, barbecue stuff. We're going to this grad later. Mm -hmm. We'll... We had asked if we're going to go to the sober grad. No, we're too old. I would feel, I don't know, kind of almost strange going by that. Too well, old. Well, it's the same um, sober grad setup as was yeah, the Brad the 007. Hart. So exactly. if you want to go back and look at our 007 mm -hmm. piece we did with Kathy Kath last week. Mm -hmm. And Kathy Mazzaferro was nice enough to take us around and show us all the different 007 sections from the it's different cool. movies. And it's very cool. So if you if you don't make it or don't want to make it or just want to see what the kids are doing or where sort of the setup that they're going to be spending the evening in tonight you can go back and check it out on it's on video on demand yeah it is mm -hmm. and it's probably just down off the top of the, the site the but it's stack. still on the front page yes, so exactly. um, also um, there's going to be um, Let's see. I was just looking for the. Oh, and it was a little chilly. We noticed on the Bear Valley cams. We didn't put. It, we didn't post any pictures of it. They got a little bit of snow. <laughs> so uh, they got a little bit of snow uphill. But it's mm -hmm. supposed to be. Uh, everything's supposed to start warming back up as of mm -hmm. tomorrow, right? Yep. And, and you have the weather up, so we can give them the weather. I will do the weather here. Okay. Real quickly here. So. So and we can tell you what the weather is. And what was interesting about this particular storm the other night is that it didn't hit all of the county. It was dry down in Wallace and Burson and really? Valley Springs. Mm -hmm. So They got a smattering apparently in Copperopolis, Bar 20, and it just hit the Ebbets Pass Corridor. Interesting. Yes. So it must have come through Tuolumne. So we're the, we're the green belt up there? Well, it looks awfully green. <laughs> There's a lot of trees. <laughs> um, also, I guess here we're looking out for Arnold. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Tonight, and since you're going to be staring into it, want me to do more of the weather tonight? Than yes, why normal? don't you do the weather? Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, low of 42 tonight, a high of 67 tomorrow. Low of 49 tomorrow night. Friday back up in the 70s, high of 73, Saturday high of 78, and on Sunday we're back up to 79, so we're looking uh, Arnold level back up into the 80s by the weekend, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just close. Nice. Um, Bear Valley, it is warming back up as well, still a low of 29 tonight. So chilly, still, uh, very chilly. But then we go back down to where Saturday night, a low of uh, 43, high of almost 70 on Sunday, so we're looking... So if you're going to camp, make sure you take layers. And a, a heated tent. Yes. <laughs> and Sarah's going, this is why I don't camp. Yeah, yeah. I don't camp. <laughs> we like four walls and blankets <laughs> and beds. No, okay. For Murphy's, low of 45 tonight, high of 74 tomorrow, low of 51 on Thursday night, high of 78 on Friday. Uh, Saturday, a high of 83, so another good weekend to come up and go nice. wine tasting and wander around. Absolutely. So it's that's almost perfect convertible weather. So if you have it a convertible, is. bring it up. Down. There you go. Have so it's nice not going to be up. too hot. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, on Sunday, a high of 83, a low of 54 on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Angels Camp. And we'll see if we get our little inversion thing where it's colder and... Yeah, it is. A degree a little, colder. A little chillier. Uh, low of 48 tonight, mm -hmm. high of 74 tomorrow, low of 53 tomorrow night, high of 78 on Friday, mm -hmm. a high of 82 on Saturday, and a high of 82 on Sunday. So it'll be very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice uh, road condition, you know, and we're looking at our road conditions here on Highway 4. And you also mm -hmm. on our weather page, during the winter this applies more than summer, but they always have the Highway 4 road conditions yes. right below the weather. Exactly. So, and those get pulled straight from the... Uh, the Caltrans site. Caltrans site. Mm -hmm. And there's no traffic restrictions. That's right. So tomorrow, join us. On Thursday night, we do our annual 
weekly, not an annual. <laughs> yes, or annual. But an yes. annual yet weekly. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what to do. So join us tomorrow for what to do. And I guess one last thing is this mm -hmm. was our bypass issue. Mm -hmm. You'll see behind us there was uh, there's barriers there. Yes. There be was over to the left hand side. There's the big heavy equipment, and mm -hmm. maybe in a couple three months they'll be. I'll be shoveling dirt. They should. We'll see. And we'll see. They expect, what is it, how many days was it? About 300 construction days. So they mm -hmm. may actually. It was quite a, quite a few. So we'll These actually probably span three years, three yeah. construction <laughs> seasons. No, I guess um, the three construction seasons. Summer, yeah. Unless they get the contractor that did the uh, MacArthur. Uh, Bypass. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Exchange. That's true. That was amazing. That was that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. So join us tomorrow night. And, and we'll thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we appreciate it. Was interesting thing is on uh, Monday, and I think it was after the uh, bicycling thing. We had a new high for hits. We had almost sixty thousand hits on Monday. Quite a few. So that was kind of fun. So, so we appreciate that. We appreciate you stopping by because mm -hmm. we know there's a lot of other places you can go for news. And hopefully we can provide something of value, and if not, a chuckle, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night.